Well, I am rejoicing. I'm just thinking back through the month of March so far, all the wonderful places I've had the opportunity to preach and see people saved. I'm looking at my calendar. I started the month in Richmond, Virginia, at a wonderful church there, Good News Baptist. And we had a great service uh, at the beginning of the month there. And then we did our prayer camp, Mountain Moving Prayer at the Edge Christian Camp. And then I was at Forest Ridge Baptist Church there in Maryland. <laughs> then uh, preached at that Christian school in Chesapeake, Indian Creek Welcome Christian School. I always have a great time there. And we had a couple of children receive Christ uh, that day. Then I went down to Wilmington to Peace Baptist Church. Had a great time there, Pastor Rudy Shepherd. And then went to Washington, D.C. that I told you about um, on my last weekend report. Here we are again at another end of the week, weekend. And um, yeah, Washington, D.C. last week. And then um, First Baptist Church of Belmont, West Virginia. Wonderful night there in the missions conference. And then we had revival meeting last Friday, Saturday, and Sunday uh, there at Ashland Street Baptist Church in Archdale, North Carolina. And that's a wonderful church. And um, I loved getting to be with my friends there. And then uh, this week, um, praise God, I'm here in West Virginia right now. Um, today, on this Saturday, we, um, we had our Ironworks Men's Conference a little over 200 men. There were 21 pastors there. And I don't know how many other evangelists and preachers there. And then a lot of uh, God's men out of different churches were there. Now, this is about half the size it was uh, pre-pandemic. You know, this, this is our first time back. We had took two years off. We'd always do it in March. But we took two years off. The pandemic started just before Ironworks uh, Men's Conference of uh, 2020, and then we 2021, we still did not have it. And it was so wonderful to do it again. And uh, Evangelist Dale Vance preached for us, and Dr. Mike Edwards preached, and uh, Brother Bo Burgess gave a report, Pastor John Pinson gave a report, um, Brother Fred Hart uh, talked with us about uh, uh, bus drivers for uh, our churches, and of course, Pastor Kevin Bartlett and the sponsoring pastors, uh, Lee Swore. We held it right there at uh, Pastor Lee Swore's church. And we've got it on the schedule for next year in March. You want to put the date on your calendar and you really want your men to come to this. I mean, some of the best preaching I've ever heard in my life. And of course, I get to lead the singing and help moderate the services. I just love um, getting to do that kind of work and, and um, extend invitations Oh, the men were on the altar today making holy commitments to God about many things. And we're glad about all of that. And in America, it's been an unusual week, hasn't it? Um, you know, we, uh, well, we heard a pretty famous line now uh, from a nominee for the Supreme Court saying, I am not a biologist. Well, friends, I'm not a biologist either, but I do know what a man is and I know what a woman is. That seems pretty bizarre, doesn't it? To a God-fearing Christian that seems a, to be a bizarre answer. Now, it's a lot of pressure being there in front of Congress. And um, we've got a lot of confusion everywhere. But God made two kinds of people. He made men and he made women. And I know that there have been a handful of um, exceptional situations. I mean, I've got a thumb and four fingers on this hand. But there have been a few abnormalities. There have been people born without any hands. There have been people that had six fingers. Uh, there are a few abnormalities. Uh, that does happen occasionally. But um, look, there's men and there's women. And that's the way it is, friends. Um, there's so much confusion. And God made uh, people. Uh, we're designed in the image of God. We are body, soul, and spirit. We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's the Trinity. And man is body, soul, and spirit. So much confusion. What do we need? We need to get back to the Bible. That's really what we need to get back to. Um, life is sacred. You know, that's been politicized. But uh, the life issue is a Bible issue. And it's about gender confusion. 
I, I have a hard time getting my mind around some of this. So what do we need to do? Well, just keep winning souls, keep worshiping the Lord, keep uh, giving the truth. Men, I challenge you, give the truth to your family. Have the courage to lead your family for God. And mama, you be the heart of your family. Um, help your husband and be good to your husband. And raise your children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And so many things in the economy I'm thinking about. $30.3 trillion in national debt. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. I'm tempted to say that's immoral. Because if we're making debts that we never plan to pay back, that is wrong. Should people pay their debts? Well, of course they should. And then I hear other things. Uh, the minimum wage should be $15. Really? You need to think that through. Often the very people that you're saying that you're trying to help, you end up hurting. Because business owners, they're not going to overpay <clears throat> for very simple work. They, they can just automate it or find some informal way of getting it done. And it, it doesn't help. And while I'm talking about these things, think about progressive tax. I want to challenge your thinking in some of these things. Progressive tax. The more you make, the higher percentage tax you ought to pay. Why do you say that? Are you trying to de-incentivize people from making money? Um, are you a socialist? Uh, you want to level the playing field? What is your goal? What is your ambition? So many times this seem to be, these thoughts seem to be given to us as caring, but they're not well thought out. And progressive tax, I'm not in favor of that. It's the law of the land, but I don't think it's best. What does God do? Well, God has a, you might um, use it as a model for taxes. God has a thing called tithe, 10%. 10%. I think all of God's people ought to give at least 10% in the cause of Christ. I say at least because really that's just the minimum. I think you ought to give more than a tithe. But uh, God has a 10%. So why? Why do we have 30% and 35% and even higher tax brackets for Americans? I don't think that's best. I think that causes um, um, people not to want to earn because the government just gets more of it. And I know a lot of Americans are disenfranchised. They don't believe the money is spent effectively. And there, there is credibility to that thought. Um, and if it was a flat tax, you know, that'd be pretty simple. Because right this moment, think how convoluted all the tax laws are. Very convoluted. So what can one little fellow do? Well, he can let his light shine. He can try to spread the truth within his family, within his sphere of influence. Stand up for what is right. <laughs> Don't worry about things. Don't worry. Get in the fight for truth and right. Try to make a difference. Try to win souls. Give out gospel tracts. Get up early in the morning. Read your Bible. That's what a man ought to do. And uh, lead his family uh, to church. Lead his family in worshiping God. Be a holy man. Mamas ought to be holy righteous, speak correctly, um, raise their children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. All these are wonderful things. That's what Christians do. And so as we come to the end of the week, I'm looking forward. Tomorrow morning, I get to preach at Maranatha Baptist Church uh, for my good friend, Pastor Kevin Bartlett. I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, I'm flying down to Dallas and uh, have a pastor's retreat that I'll be part of on Monday and Tuesday, then God willing be at Worth Baptist Church this coming Wednesday. Pastor Tyler Gillett, I'm happy about that. And then flying on up to Ohio. I'll be with uh, uh, next Friday uh, on April 1st. No fooling. On April 1st, no fooling. I'm trying to get a little joke in there. I'll be with my friend Dr. David Gibbs, and we've got a uh, 1130 pastor's luncheon, and we're going to talk about trying to raise the level of righteousness in the state of Ohio. And that certainly needs to happen all across our country. And there's one group of people that will raise the level of righteousness. That's God's people. Then God willing, uh, on that Saturday, I'll be there at Troy Baptist in 
Troy, Ohio, and uh, my good pastor friend there, Pastor David Thomas. And I get to be with so many wonderful pastors. Now, let me tell you something. In the last two years, I've only eaten two donuts. I'm trying not to eat donuts. It's hard to resist. The two donuts that I've eaten in two years, they've been with Pastor David Thomason. Yeah, two years ago, we went out. We we're looking, well, candidly, we're going gun shopping. Yeah, we're going gun stores looking. That's what men like to do. And we're looking around, looking around. And both of us found deals. Oh, two years ago, we found a deal. Yeah, yeah. Found a deal on uh, uh, Ruger 9 millimeters. Yeah. And I bought one and he bought one. We were so happy about it. We came out and there was a donut store right there. And Pastor Thomason, who's my good friend, he said to me, he said, Brother Fox, this donut store really makes good donuts. He said, let's have one. Oh boy, I hadn't eaten a donut at that point for months. I, you know, he's my good preacher friend. I ate a donut with him. Yeah. Well, I went on about my business and um, another year later, I was back with uh, Pastor David Thomas. And you know what we did? We had a donut. Yeah, we looked at guns. We didn't buy anything, but we looked at them. <laughs> didn't buy anything, but um, we had a donut. And so I'm going up there Saturday. What am I thinking about right now? Eating a donut. <laughs> yeah, I love getting to go and be with my friend David Thomason so I can eat me a donut. Yeah, I'll probably have another one. Have one donut a year. Yeah, I was getting to be a bigger preacher every time you saw me, but... Um, I'm trying not to do that anymore. <laughs> so I'm on the one donut a year diet. Uh, well, now look, uh, make your life count. Close out your day with God. Start your day with God. Live for God. That's what really counts. We're going to stand before the Lord and give an account for how we've lived. And so um, a lot of things on the national scene we can't really impact. But oh, if you could lead somebody to Christ. Oh, if you could lead somebody to Christ. That'd be a wonderful thing, wouldn't it? I understand that 96% of our church people have never led anyone to Christ. Oh, why don't you pray right now that God will let you lead someone to Christ? Well, that's my little year, uh, week end, the end of the week report. <laughs> I almost said year end. <laughs> um, we're still at the very beginning of the year, just March here. But, oh, let's make our weeks count for the Lord. Thank you for watching this YouTube channel. If you like this, why don't you put a little like on it? Maybe subscribe if you haven't subscribed. But let's do something in the cause of Christ. May God bless.